We got a little late night project going on, a little white marble. Waldo's rolling out the base coat, getting ready to add some highlights, some silver, blending it with the squeegee. This is over a wood subfloor. We got the vents, vents in the floor. Never even know it's over a wood subfloor. All right guys, so I got a little bit of our prep replacement rolled out. I'll kind of go through the process of what we're gonna be doing here. So it's a wood subfloor. Um, it's really stout, tongue and groove, nailed down really good. We checked for any loose spots. Um, and this area was painted with probably a killer's primer. So we're using our prep replacement primer just on this area because we couldn't get it all up. Just started gumming up the sander and stuff. So we just knocked down any wood chunks or burrs that were sticking up. I've already started rolling the prep replacement out. Once we get this down, we're gonna take our patch and paste and we're gonna scratch coat the whole floor and that's gonna fill in all our seams, our nail hole, holes, and it's gonna create a really nice solid surface to put our epoxy on. Um, and we're gonna go another step after that. We're also gonna do a flood coat of epoxy before we actually do our metallic decorative coat. So that'll even out the floor and level it out. It's gonna add a lot of rigidity to the floor and we'll show you guys the full process. So what I'm doing now is rolling out a prep replacement just in this area. I'm just dumping it out of the bucket. So we got it mixed up here. This stuff's amazing. So it'll chemically bond to all kinds of different, you know, paints, primers, sealers, stuff like that. And then our, our epoxy will adhere to this. So it's a great product for uh, going over VCT tile, stuff like this that you don't know what it is or you can't get it up. And this is extremely easy to apply. You can see we just dump a little out and then we start rolling that out. You can see it goes, it goes really far. And this will dry. We'll be able to cut over this in probably 20 minutes. It's just an amazing product for any time you need to get a really good bond on different substrates. The prep replacement's drying. By the time we get there, we'll be able to coat right over it. So we got the patch of paste mixed up. Alex is gonna be helping me with the tight corners, around trim, anything like that. I'm gonna use the big scraper right here, and I'm just gonna scratch it on the floor. Just pulling it really tight. It's gonna fill in all these low spots, um, so we'll get started. And if you guys get the product, acclimate that patch of paste. If it's cold, it's gonna be really thick, so. We're actually using some really thick stuff because it was cold. We didn't acclimate it, um, so it's gonna be a lot thicker than normal, but still workable. So that's it, guys. Just get to your edge. See how it's filling in all the spots. And we have a few gaps here. We wanna make sure we get everything filled in. So I might hit it two different directions. Just like that, now it's filled in. You can see we have a low spot here in the wood. So I'll get a little product. 
And we're gonna go crossways on it. That's gonna help us fill in those spots in the floor. I just wanna make sure that I'm not leaving any high spots or ridges anywhere that we have to sand. And, and we'll go tomorrow. Usually you'll have some spots that you might need to buzz down, but the better you scratch coat the floor, the less work it is the next day. All right, we got our second batch going. Again, guys, the benefit of this process, not only does it make your floors bulletproof and rowdy, because um, it's soaking in that wood, it's locking everything in, and it's epoxy base, so it's gonna get rock hard. Um, but we can do, we can stop however we want and just trawl right over that. It's not gonna matter because we're scratching it tight. So you can see like the low spots in the wood. We've got a high, high difference in the wood here, low. This is how filling all that in. Um, and by the time we get done with this coat, do our flood coat, we're gonna have a basically nice flat floor to do our final decorative metallic coat. This is gonna look absolutely beautiful. So again, we're just scratching it tight. This is our second batch. And it'll go a lot faster out here. We had a lot of spots we had to get inside there. The, the pantry area really tight. So this is more open, we'll be able to go a lot faster out here. So all I'm doing is just get right up to that edge. And then once you get this edge done, I'll just go back and forth. All right guys, the next step is to apply our flood coat. So we got our patch or paste down, um, it's dry. We're gonna be wearing cleats. We're gonna be applying this flood coat at about 70 square foot a gallon. We've marked off the walls where each batch is gonna go. So a 4.5 gallon kit of epoxy is gonna go, is gonna do this whole room. The next one will do the whole kitchen out in that hall a little bit. So that way uh, we know exactly how far I need to stretch this to get that 70 square foot coverage. It's simple to figure out your square foot coverage, um, measure a wall, get your length, divide your square foot by that length, and that'll tell you how wide you need to go. So easy way to figure out, you know, break up room so you know exactly how far to stretch it. So I'm gonna pour this out in beads, and I'm not gonna go past these marks. And once I get these 4.5 gallon out on the floor, that's gonna be about 70 square foot a gallon.
Notice how he's got a pretty even amount of beads poured out. He doesn't have really thick ones and skinny ones. They're very similar to the same thickness. So now I'm just gonna start trialing those back and forth. I don't wanna trial it. If you pour a bead out, I don't wanna go this way. I'm just gonna be pushing all the product. I wanna go wall to wall, and that's gonna keep grabbing epoxy as I'm moving down. Guys, we're getting ready to apply the WB primer, uh, but I'll kind of walk you through what we did. So we sanded the floor, 80 grit sanding screens to knock down any high spots. And then we took a palm sander, sanded down any really thick spots that the floor sander didn't get. And then we also, the red spots, this is just some Bondo. Then we filled any spots that maybe we thought were going all the way through the floor or like right here that was the seam didn't get filled all the way. We don't want to lose resin in those seams. So we went, went around, filled any of those spots. And then we, we didn't scratch this correctly with the patcher paste. We went across it like this, so we didn't fill that in. So we did Bondo here as well. We sanded it first, cleaned it, and then we applied the Bondo. Uh, really easy way to fix any spots that you might have missed. But other than that, you can see like right here, this is a really low spot. Patcher paste filled that amazingly. Filled that in good. And again, we sanded it. Then we vacuumed it. I blew everything into corners. Everything, any leftover dust or debris on the floor, blew it into a corner. And then uh, we vacuumed that up. And then we took just a plain rag and some denatured alcohol, mopped the floor real quick to get it nice and clean. So now we're gonna be applying the WB Primer White because we wanna get this floor a nice bright white color before we apply the white uh, epoxy down. All right guys, so we're applying the primer. Alex is doing the edges with the nine inch roller. So he's gonna go around and fill the edges for me. I'm gonna take the 18 inch roller. I'm using a half inch nap just so I can get more on there to roll it out. We wanna roll this out thin though. The primer is designed to go on thin. Um, and so I'm gonna go out for him, start hitting the floor, get it all white. Make sure we ro roll it out thin when you're applying the primer. And then we're just dipped and rolled in. So this isn't gonna heat up in a bucket. Plenty of working time. And once this is rolled out, it's a fast cure primer. So once it's rolled out thin, it's gonna dry extremely fast.
<laughs> so if you guys are wondering why we're priming after epoxy, um, it's because we did the patch of paste, we scratch coated the wood with patch of paste, and that soaks into the wood. That's gonna get a way better bond than trying to do the primer first, then that's not gonna let that patch of paste soak into the wood. So we wanted that to soak into the wood and basically weld to that wood surface, kind of blend in there and, and create a, like an everlasting bond. Um, so that's why we're doing primer now versus before. If you guys aren't doing patch of paste, or a flood coat like this, a lot of guys will just do primer, epoxy, top coat over wood. So they'll fill all their seams with Bondo, and then they'll come in, they'll prime it, and then they'll do their epoxy, and then they'll do their top coat. So this one's a little different. Uh, they wanted to do a little rowdier of a, a coating over the wood subfloor, they're just doing the typical Bondo your seeds, prime it, and epoxy it. So that's kind of why we're priming now instead of before. So we're getting ready to put down the epoxy coat, the basically the decorative coat. Uh, we're gonna be doing a base coat of white, and then we're gonna be adding uh, silver metallics and blending those with the squeegee. A bunch of bane patterns are gonna look really cool. So what we have on the walls, we have our tape lines again. So I know you have a wall by the fireplace, and then right here on the counter. So this first batch, 4.5 gallons, is gonna do 202 square feet, which comes out to about here, all the way down. So I don't wanna stretch this past that. That's all gotta stay on this half. And then when we get our next batch, it's gonna to go to that next tape mark. It'll basically do this whole section in the middle. And you, you'll kinda of see the process as we go. You kinda, of, might make more sense to you, but I'm gonna start with the first section, get the white all the way rolled out, and then Alex is gonna bring me highlights so I'm not waiting. Add the highlights, get this section completely done, and we move on to the next one. That way we always have fresh material. You never wanna to try to do the whole floor, a large floor like this, um, doing the base coat and then doing your highlights because it's gonna set up on you. So we do it in sections just like this. So I got my product here. We don't wanna leave this in a bucket longer than it needs to be. So I'm gonna start dumping it out. All right, so the fastest way to spread this out, squeegee it, and then we're gonna take the roller, roll it out real quick, and then I'll add my, my highlights. The roller should basically be quiet, so you can't hear it because it sounds sticky. If you start hearing a sticky sound, like it's really sticky, like if I were to roll out here, that means it's too thin in that spot and you want to get some more product there. Tell it's a little thick out here, so I'm gonna start pushing that in a little bit. Just applying pressure on the roller, and it will kind of act like a screw. You see that? So I'm getting ready to apply the highlights, so Alex is gonna start mixing up my next section of white. So Alex is making the 
and mixing up the next jack. I'm going to apply the highlight, blend it with the squeegee. Um, just remember, you can't take color out. We can always add to it. So I'm going to start with a medium amount of, of veins of color, and then they'll give me the okay if they like it or not. I'll continue on. Best thing to do, make samples, get the look that you want, and then recreate that on the floor instead of just trying to wing it on a job. So to do the veins, I'm just going to drizzle it off my paint stick, and it looks like this. Just random directions, okay? I don't want to have any vein going the same direction over and over. Biggest thing people forget to do is that color in between these. So all I'm gonna do is just get some color right next to the wall. This is gonna make it look like the floor goes under the wall. So just random spots, it doesn't take much, just get a little bit. I just want to blend them enough to where it doesn't look like a squiggly line. So some might take a little more than others. If I really need to blend it in good, I can use the corner of the squeegee. Again, we're just trying to blend this enough to where it doesn't look like we just pour out some lines. And then Alex got my next batch ready, so he'll dump out the beads. We don't want to leave it in the bucket. And he's not going to go past line for that section that we're coated. The tape lines that are on the wall. All right, so before we move on, I'm gonna just spritz it with the isopropyl. It'll create some really cool looks anywhere that silver was really thinned out, like right through here. It'll create some really cool cells. I wanna make sure I'm not gonna slip on this. I don't have to go back and hit it. You guys, we know the lighting is not the greatest, um, but this is kind of what we have to work with and we wanted to show you guys this process, so just bear with us on that. Alright, so I got my next batch poured out, so what do I want to do? I want to squeegee this all out, roll it, apply the highlights, and then just continue that process all throughout the floor.
I don't want to roll into any of that pattern out there, so I'm going to stay away a little bit. I can blend it with the squeak, but that's not an issue. I just don't want to roll it with the roller. I can tell it's a lot thicker at this edge, so I'm going to pull some product back up there, just real quick. All right, so now I'm gonna apply the uh, highlights the same exact way, but I wanna make sure I'm getting highlights in between all the ones that are touching this floor. So I'm gonna start, get one right here, get one right here. So same thing, I'm going to spritz with isopropyl. You can see we got some spots here that, that aren't exactly filled in. If you see those, just help fill those in a little bit before you spray.
So we're getting ready to apply the top coat. We're doing our gloss urethane. Um, we also have a matte urethane, which is really cool, super popular. Um, but we're gonna be using the roller tray, dip and roll. It's not gonna set up in the bucket. We have plenty of working time with this. Um, so Alex is gonna get my edges going with the nine inch roller and the paintbrush in spots you can't get. And then I'm gonna take the 18 inch roller and we're gonna go wall to wall. And you guys will kind of see the process, but it's relatively simple. We're gonna do the same thing as we did on the epoxy coat and out the front door. So we'll get started and show you guys how to do that. So I'm, I'm basically waiting for him to get enough depth where I can go on the wall. I don't want him going too far past me because by the time I get there, it might be like a second coat over his edge. So we want to kind of do it somewhat simultaneously to where when he does the edge, I'm catching right up to him with the, the big roller. 